What is going on beautiful people? Can you believe it's now been the best part of two months since we set up the eight foot aquarium? A lot has changed since the start, but uh, mission mission complete, let's tear it down. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, all right? It has not been without its issues though. I mean, just stood back here straight away, you're probably noticing there's, there's something going on, sort of rough looking at the top here. And that is a lot of plants that have been uprooted, not by the fish, which is what you'd expect maybe, I don't know. But it's actually over here, you can see in this section, oh, I just smashed the glass, sorry fish, you all got very spooked then. <laughs> I went a bit cross-sided, didn't know how close I was to the glass. But yeah, you can see there, there's an internal filter head that's come unstuck from the side, is pointing down at the bottom, and it just removed a load of uh, plants in this section. It's very, very high flow. That internal one, it just has um, filter floss in it and it's really just for taking out any fine particulates that are in the water column so it works really well by the way because the water always looks so clear another issue you might be noticing if I stand here around this section here look, if I move up and down steady you can see there's like a band that goes from here to here all the way across the aquarium with a little bit of green spot algae that's just where the lights obviously hit in that area and that's not a problem at all though because that's like super simple to fix just a bit of a blade the other thing, the Echinodorus you can see here is looking a little bit sort of drained of nutrients. So I think we need to go right in at the base and just stick some root tabs. Echinodorus use nutrients from their area so fast because they have these really thick and uh, elaborate root systems. So you do have to feed them quite heavily, but it's not affected any of the other plants around it because I guess they don't need quite as much. But look at those reds. Looks absolutely insane, right? I think we should take a moment as well just to just to hold this shot and have a look at all the fish. Every time I come to the tank, all of the angels now, and to be fair, the keyhole cichlids as well, all come to this middle section ready for feeding. They are due a feed, we're gonna do that, but at the moment I just wanna sort out all the sort of minor issues that we've got going on. Really happy down here though, you can see the uh, Cryptocryne flamingo, tons and tons of pink leaves all coming through, all those green ones on the outside of it, they are the original leaves after you plant it. So I'm gonna just gonna trim those off now and just let that red sort of just take over in that section. I mean, yeah, not to forget as well. Look at the, at the, uh, the lily behind it, the lotus plant, tiger lotus that, <laughs> hello guys, tiger lotus that is. I'm getting too ahead of myself, aren't I? I'm, I'm filming the aquarium and I'm not even cleaning the glass. I mean, surely that's the first thing you do, right? <laughs> So I started off cleaning the tank there with the uh, scraper because I completely forgot about my magnet. M magnet cleaner, what do you call it? A magnet algae scraper. Yeah, this thing here. So I use a scraper on basically every single other tank, but just because of the, the actual sort of scale of this thing and trying to get right down the bottom, plus all the bracing at the top can make it a lot more difficult as well. So because of that, I just used the uh, I just used the magnet scraper on this one, which believe it or not, the mag scraper is way more effort than the razor scraper. The razor is just like one pass, all comes off. Whereas the scraper, you've got to do more scrubbing, but it's worth it because the overall result, I think is a little bit better. You, you cover every single bit and probably works out faster as well, even though you've got a proper go for it. It's a very strong magnet. A lot of you asked before, what brand is this? Cause it's like super powerful. <laughs> I like to... <laughs> oh, that's broke. <laughs> I, did, I don't use that bit anyway. My hands are too wet to actually open it now. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, it's super powerful magnet. I can't tell you what brand this is because it just says MB1. I don't even know where I got it from. I got it on Amazon. I'll try and find it and leave a link if you're interested. I can't remember the company name to be honest, but it's so strong. Now, the reason it's so strong is because this glass is very thick. And of course, because you're a certain distance away, you need that power to be able to grip it. So yeah, it works so well for this aquarium. I wouldn't use it on the other aquariums. It would probably smash the glass to be honest. Boom. <laughs> anyway, glass now cleaned. Everything looks much better. You can actually see all the details on the fish really nicely. Look, I'm always drawn to the angels, especially these three in the middle here. They're just absolutely magnificent specimens, to be fair. So is the sort of black marble one as well. Obviously, we've still got the keyholes looking great. There's a nice Siamese 
algae eater. Flying fox, I think it is. I don't think they're the same thing, but still, it's an algae eater. It gets rid of all the sort of hair algae that would grow. The Akaras that I thought would remain hidden a lot of the time, they sort of do and don't. They're a lot more confident. They're out quite a bit, to be honest. They're, they're the most shy of all of the fish in the aquarium, but you can see, look, there's, there's the odd brave one as well coming forwards and all the tetras, not bothered at all. I thought there might be a case that um, because the angels are a lot bigger, that they would school and be a bit scared, but that isn't the case at all. They literally do not care that there's like larger angel fish in this aquarium, which is cool. So otherwise it might be a little bit sort of like, I don't know, they'd just be like petrified in like one corner, but, but they're not, they're everywhere and they're enjoying it too. Anyway, let's get some things cleared up. Need to sort out that internal filter, probably need to clean as well. Just noticed I've spilt a load of leaf zone on top of this light as well, which has kind of just melted it on. Try and get that off. Um, yeah, I might not be able to do that. Just putting loads of this into the water column. So I'm gonna take that off to clean that, I think. Ah, there we go. That was really sort of etched on. But now we're nice and clean again. I don't know how I've managed to miss the whole tank and get the light. Oh, and I know like these reflections are very annoying at certain points. That's because at the moment I'm filming with this thing here, which doesn't go wide enough, you see. If I push it this way, it shows all of that side and vice versa. So I've got a new one coming that's much bigger, more sort of foldable and put awayable because this is a pain. It takes up so much space and like you're always tripping over it and everything. So yeah, I've got a new one coming that should work so much better. And I know a lot of you who know your sort of like photography and things will be like, get a CPL filter. That doesn't work with aquariums because CPL works when you're at an angle to the surface. Say you're at an angle to a river or a window on a car. But uh, when you're dead on, it doesn't really do anything. I've tried it before. So yeah, don't, CPL is not the answer. Big black screens are, but that's coming. It should come tomorrow. So here is that um, filter floss that I was talking about inside of there. It's, it's like a pre-filter more than anything, but look at that. That is a lot of gunk that's collected. And obviously all of that would have been in the filter, but it's collected here, which can be removed easily and cleaned up. So I sort of unravel it, look, there is so much gunk in that. You can just put a new one in, but this was new last time. After a few goes, I do tend to put some new floss in. You can buy a big pack of it for cheap, but it seems silly not to clean it out and reuse it while she still can. And then that can all go back together. We can put it back in the tank. Impeller's all good as well. You can see that's all clear. Working a treat, it'll blow out a bit of crud to start with, but within an hour or so, that would re-clean the whole of the water, to be honest. Along with the FX6 in this one and the FX6 in this one as well. And then the next job is just to clean up all of these uh, plants at the top on the surface there. They're kind of merging quite nicely, actually, but yeah, I'll just bunch them up, put a little weight on them, dip them back in that corner, and it should start looking a little bit neater again. We'll be able to cut off any scragglers as well, like this one here. Looks a bit weird going across like that. It's actually looked starting to send out new shoots from each node, which means it'll start growing upwards as well as across, which you don't really want. It can look a bit odd. So that's almost everything taken care of. It looks fresh, doesn't it? Except for these Echinodorus need to get in there, trim those, and then put in um, more root tabs right into the base of where the plant goes into the soil. Just one per plant should be enough for the time being. And when you start to see deficiencies, again, put them back in, 
or if you're clever enough, you can preempt it, but I'm not clever enough. So, oh, something funny happened as well. I think, I think a new ladder is in order. I literally went like this. <laughs> it was off camera though, but oh, I wish I got it on camera. I face planted this, it didn't hurt. It was just like embarrassing, even though I'm on my own. <laughs> Then of course we've got the root tabs and I always use the API ones, it just always worked so well for me. Nice and simple, one tab I'm going to use per plant. Of course a massive tank like this needs massive tweezers. These are the super fish ones, they work really well. I'm going to push it nice and deep so it doesn't float back up when I pull it out the sand and I'm just flicking the end of the uh, I do that with the end of the tweezers as I release and then the sand sort of goes back in where you pull out. Otherwise, if you just whip it straight out, there's like a hole in the sand. And that should sort everything, to be honest, because a lot of these taller leaves that I've also left, because they don't look too tatty, um, they were the leaves, excuse me guys, they were the leaves that were on the plant when I actually planted it. The newer growth, is all of the shorter ones you can see, which are a lot more sort of dense in colour, slightly sort of different shape to them as well, a little bit more crinkle, but that could be just where they're little baby leaves, but yeah. I'll just monitor it, and every time one of, the, one of the leaves sort of goes a bit funny like the last ones, I'll just snip it off. And then in the meantime, all the new ones will be growing through as well. Seemed a shame just to hack it all back right now when there's a nice little sort of section of green there. So the tank is looking superb, and I think now is the time to add the absolute final fish for the tank. The stocking level will be fully complete. If you remember the last episode, I mentioned I'd like to put some quarries in. I've got some. And in this tank here is where I've got all of the quarries. They're <laughs> just hiding at the back there. It looks a mess because I've just taken out all the decoration, well, all the wood and the um, rocks in there and stirred it up a bit. Just let that settle and then I can catch them all out. Oh, there's one now. Now they're kind of an understated quarry. They will get bigger, but they've just got a nice sort of slaty look to them. And a sort of more brownie finish. I've got about 12, I think. Um, would be able to see them if it wasn't for this mist, but they're all under there. I'm also waiting for that to clear. I just want to show you something very cool. Do you remember this tank I set up? Like the Martian-y rock-only scape for my cichlids. Malawi cichlids, that is. Well, one of them has become a man. <laughs> Here we go, look, so we've got females everywhere. Females, females. Boom! Look at my boy. Look at the colours. Literally, that's happened over the course of a couple of weeks. Gone from being just like this one below, and now he's got these amazing colours on him, and he's the absolute boss of the tank. I mean, he always was the boss because he was slightly bigger, which you know, sort of explains why he become the dominant male with the full coloration. Um, apparently, you can feed these fish certain foods that makes them all like that. But is that meddling a bit too much, do you think? Is it better just to allow this sort of natural progression? You don't get as many colourful fish, of course, but uh, it was very exciting to see, to see him sort of come out of nowhere. Because I was noticing a few sort of colours that could mean that it was going to happen. And then all of a sudden, just like that, it's almost like it got to the right size, the right age maybe, and become boss. Even my wife came in and said, have you put a new fish in that tank? I was like, no, <laughs> literally has just happened so fast. Yeah, so I'm really happy with that. Anyway, this is now clear enough. <laughs> they just are little stones. Let's round up the quarry. Okay, so we've got 12 in total. Missed that step. This is dangerous, I need to order another one. <laughs> I keep forgetting it's broken as well and treading onto it and falling. So yeah, I've got 12 in total. All the temperatures match, by the way, guys, so we're all good. Now, will they go and hide straight away? Yay! Awesome, they're not hiding at the moment. Oh, well, uh, well they weren't hiding. And now they are, they all went straight into that root of the back there. Oh, I can just about see one behind that. Ah, come on guys, come on guys, come on. Help, help, help me out here. Just behind that boost. If we give them a bit of time, I think they'll be absolutely perfect. But uh, maybe I should just feed the tank, feed the whole tank, get some food falling in that front sand area, 
I'm pretty sure they'll be coming out then. It's like I always say, there's nothing like uh, putting a little bit of food in the tank when you get new fish, just to make it feel a bit more comfortable, because at the moment they are gone. <laughs> i tell you one thing though, I have had a tank like this before where it's been sort of really heavily planted at the back and open the foreground, and I actually got loads and loads of Cory babies, and that was even with massive discus in the tank, so high probability that those guys will breed in here. I might get some more as well, let's be honest. <laughs> 12 little ones, it's not a huge amount, is it? Probably another group would be cool as well. I really like the gold lace a Corey. So if I ever see any of those anywhere, I'm going to be adding those to this tank for sure. But yeah, let's get some food up in here. And what I like to do is uh, crumble the flake into the water column so it doesn't just sit on the top. And that way it will go right down on the base as well. There you go, look, just crumbling it all up. Then you've got bigger bits and smaller bits as well. The angels are blatantly just going to pick off the biggest stuff. But yeah, loads of it is making its way down to the bottom as well. And obviously the Corys aren't stupid, so they're gonna sense that there's something in the water column food-wise. And they're probably gonna come out, I mean, it might have been a little bit too early to start sort of trying to tease them out when you've just gone in a tank that's like, whoa, look at this place. <laughs> oh, no, saying that, saying that. There's one of our little babies now. Don't be afraid, buddy, come forward. Look at all the other fish, look, all the other fish are out, so you know it's fine. I mean, saying that, that food, our food's literally gone already. <laughs> so they're sticking some more. I'll also put in some Cory pellets as well, sinking pellets, so they all sit on the foreground. Yeah, here we go, look, because the others won't sort of try and eat these as much. I mean, they will, but the, the cichlids do. The, the keyhole cichlids and the bigger angels will try, but they're, look, they're already settling down, so that's good. More coming this way. Guys, please can we just save some for our new arrivals? Like, <laughs> Flake's gone already, uh, but there's definitely some sort of, yeah, there's lots sitting down on the foreground there. Look at these beautiful, long, thin bristle nose there. And this Tetra's got a full <laughs> Cory pellet in its mouth. <laughs> no wonder they're so chunky. Ah, oh, there we go, look, in the middle there, there's a couple of them. They're just sort of staying in the mid-ground rather than coming right to the foreground but they look settled. There's a group of three there, so that's good. Oh, we're just moving off. They don't know what this thing is that's just approached them, which is the flag Akara. <laughs> Yay! We have a brave soul. Look at him, he's a slate quarry on a slaty colored rock. He knows what to do. Just stay perfectly still and they won't see me. Ah, run away. <laughs> Tank is a lot of fun to feed though, because you, know, you see even more of the Akaras. Some of them have got some absolutely insane coloring as well. Like this one here is beautiful. As is that one, to be fair, as well. Like, you can see all the blue sort of lighting up on it. Whoa, 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 no, this one. Look at this one. Absolutely stunning. And it's not right out in the open as well. If it's right out in the light, that, those colors would be just beaming. There's three here, I didn't even notice. One, two, and three. A little bit more patient with their feeding. They're not just all out in the open like the keyholes and the uh, angelfish are, but yeah. Nice to see you make an appearance. Hi, guys. Hope you're enjoying your tank. I'm sure you are. So I'm massively pleased with the tank. Like I can't even tell you, two months in, everything just going really, really sweet with just a few minor issues in that whole time. Like I've said before, I was a little bit worried about this massive volume of water, um, but it's been, it's been a breeze. I've just followed the same sort of setups that I do, well, on all, all of my tanks really, you know, the, the substrate system, getting that locked in, enough nutrients in it so that the plants are growing fantastic. If the plants are growing fantastic, the water quality is normally spot on as well, which means the fish in turn are also extremely healthy as, as we've seen, they, they look absolutely great. I couldn't be any more pleased. Red phantoms are proper right, bright and red as well. I love the red phantom. I love all the fish in there, to be honest. I love all the fish in the whole studio. Like each one has got their own thing. It'd be a bit strange if I kept fish that I didn't like, wouldn't it? <laughs> but yeah, that's it for this one. Um, join us in the next video for this tank. I'll be breaking it down. I'm joking, I'm joking, maybe.